Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today we're gonna do a quick unboxing of the Razer Phone 2. Now you can pick this up on Amazon. I'll throw the link up in the description. The price on this one, 800 bucks. Now it comes in two colors, mirror black or rugged satin. All right, so let's run through the specs real quick. You get a 5.72 inch IPS LCD display with a resolution of 1440 by 2560. Now that's 513 for the PPI Patrol. Now you get the 120 hertz refresh rate, so the phone is gonna be silky smooth. Now here's a new upgrade. They increased the brightness to 580 nits. Now shout out to anybody that's seen my original Razer phone video. One of the things that I didn't like was the display was too dull, so this one should be nice and bright. Now the phone is made out of glass and aluminum and you get wireless charge. That's another new feature. It's also IP67 dust and water resistant. Now it's running the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 processor with the Adreno 630 GPU. Now here's another new feature. You got the vapor chamber cooling system. So basically what that means is, for all of y'all savages that be playing Fortnite all night, this is gonna keep your phone nice and cool. Now it's running Android 8.1 Optimus Prime with the Android 9 VIP update coming soon. You get eight gigs of RAM with 64 gigs of storage and you do have a micro SD card slot for expendable memory up to two terabytes. Now for the cameras, on the rear, you got a dual setup, two 12 megapixel cameras, one is f1.8, the other one is f2.6. On the front, you got an eight megapixel camera, it's f2.0. Now you get a big giant 4,000 milliamp battery that features fast charge. You still got your dual speakers with Dolby Atmos. You got your fingerprint sensor and my favorite new feature, the RGB Razer Chroma logo on the back. That's the main reason why I got this phone. All right, so let's see what it is. Shout out to White Shoes, she got the day off. Razor Phone 2. Shout out to Jack Sparrow, here we go. Rock. Nice black box. Giggity. Here we go. The Razor logo on the front. Little Razor branding. Okay, check this out. Flagship Gaming. Now, if you ever bought a product from Razer, you know what to expect with that presentation. Quality. All right. Pluck it and file it. Pause it and read it for yourself if you want, but I like to just flick it a wrist. Here's your phone. Let's see what else you get. Okay, now this is kind of like a book. <laughs> All right. I ain't mad at that. Let's see. Now, they better have my Razer stickers in here. Here's your SIM ejection tool. Okay. Usual books and shit. We'll just pluck those and follow them. Here we go. The Razor Troll stickers. Throw these on your gaming laptop. All right, so that's it for that. Here's your fast charging brick. Now everything has that Razor logo embedded on it. Definitely feeling that. Oh, check this out. Braided cable, USB type C. Oh, look at that. Attention to detail. The green on the inside. Definitely feeling that. Now, of course, there's no headphone jack. So you get your USB Type-C dongle. It is what it is. All right, so that's the end of this book. Now for the phone. Rah. Let's see, we got one more. Rah. Woo. <laughs> Beautiful. Let me do a little wipe down on this just to make sure. Check this out. Beautiful glass back design. That Razer logo lights up. RGB. And y'all know my motto. Hashtag RGB life. There's your dual cameras, your flash. This is gonna be your power button. Let's, let's see, they kept it the same way with the fingerprint sensor built into the power button. I actually like that. Volume up and down, looks like they move, uh, moved it a little lower. There's your SIM tray. Mic on the top. USB Type-C on the bottom. Two big giant speaker grills. Now I bought my two phones that have my favorite speakers and I'll show you them real quick. Right now, now I've been doing a lot of testing for the last couple of weeks. The number one phone speakers in the game is the Google Pixel 3 XL. I don't care what nobody says, these are the best dual speakers in the game. The loudest, clearest, just all around best. Number two, iPhone XS Max. Now for a phone that has big giant dual speakers built into the front, let's see if this can crack the top three. All right, so I'm gonna pause the video real quick. I'm gonna drop my information in, then we'll breeze through the OS. Talk amongst yourselves. All right, y'all, so we back in. Now, I just put my information in the phone. I've been playing around with it for a few minutes, and I gotta be 100% honest with y'all. So far, fresh out of the box, 
I like this phone, but it's definitely not for me. And it's not gonna be for a lot of y'all either, and that's cool. This phone is not meant for everybody. This is a hardcore gaming phone. That's why you got that vapor cooling system. Now, unless you're playing Fortnite or PUBG or some kind of racing games all day long, your phone is never gonna get hot enough where you need a vapor cooling system unless you're gaming. Now, I got a 1,001 phones. I keep them on max brightness. I'm on YouTube watching videos all day. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter all day long surfing the web. None of my phones ever get that hot. It's only when you're gaming is when you're gonna have to worry about your phones heating up. So if you're not a hardcore gamer, you're probably not gonna want this phone. Now I'm not gonna do a full review on this because there's a few things that I don't like about this phone and one of the things that I don't like is a major deal breaker for me. All right, so let's go over those real quick. Number one, the price. 800 bucks plus tax. You're looking at around 850 to 875 bucks. The price is too goddamn high. Now, I'd be comfortable paying 650 for this, around one plus 6T prices, but for 850 bucks, there's too many other flagship phones on the market that have way more features and better specs than this. Now, again, this is just my personal opinion because I'm not into hardcore gaming. If you're into hardcore gaming, you're not gonna care about all the bells and whistles, always on display, facial unlock. You're not gonna care about all that stuff. You want a hardcore gaming phone with a 120 hertz refresh rate, and some banging speakers, okay, cool. But for me, for 850 bucks, I'd rather get a Mate 20. Next, 64 gigs worth of storage is not enough. Now I said this before and I'll say it again, these companies need to stop making phones with 64 gigs of internal storage, especially on a gaming phone. Soon as you get this phone, you're gonna wanna download a bunch of games, there's all your memory right there. Now I will give them credit for adding a micro SD card slot but 64 gigs of internal storage, no, that's not enough. Next, no facial unlock. Now, is that a deal breaker for me? No, but I'm just not feeling that. I like to have facial unlock. Next, no always on display. Now, that kind of kills my flow because I use all these fancy wireless chargers, so I need always on display. You ain't got it on this. Now, maybe when they upgrade to Android VIP, they might have that as a stock feature, but as of right now, no always on display. Next, the fingerprint sensor on the side. Now, this is one of the things that I absolutely hated about the last one. And I, I really don't like it about this one either. Check this out. Now, generally me, I like to hold my phone like this. I don't hold it toward the bottom where it could actually flop out of my hand. I don't hold it toward the top. I hold it right in the middle. So if I'm walking around, I'm at the car show, I'm just walking around talking. I got my phone in my hand. When I want to unlock the phone, look where the fingerprint sensor is. They moved it all the way down here. So now I'm holding a phone like this, I literally cannot reach. See, now look at that. Imagine if I was outside and I dropped that. I could literally not reach the fingerprint sensor. Let's see. I could press it, but it won't register. Now, as far as the fingerprint sensor functionality, it does work fluently and smoothly. I just wish they would have put it a little bit higher. And me personally, I'm just not a big fan of the side fingerprint sensor. Give it to me on the front. Give it to me on the back, whatever. At least if I got my phone down like this. If your phone is on the table like this, you can't you can't open it. Uh, you're gonna have to double tap, swipe up, put your pad in. Now that's a lot of motion and activity. You're not really clandestinely opening up your phone. Matter of fact, let's try this just for fun. Let's see. Now I, I already know for a fact, <laughs> I, I got big hands, ladies. I cannot twist my arm in that angle to hit that fingerprint sensor. So for me, that fingerprint sensor, that's one of the deal breakers, but that ain't even the biggest deal breaker, but I just hate that. Now, I'm one of those dudes, I always walk around, if I'm at the mall, I'm at wherever I'm doing, I walk around with my phone in my hand for easy access. Now, when I want to quickly open it, I got to constantly remember to slide the phone up. That's just more chances of me dropping the phone. Now, if you got small hands, you might not have this issue but chances are, this is really a man's kind of phone. Now, shout out to all the ladies. I'm not trying to be sexist. Ladies do be gaming and all that too. But this is really a manly man kind of phone. So, man, men generally have bigger hands. All right, let me, let, me, let me not rant. Basically, I just don't like the fingerprint sensor. The placement. The way it works, no problems. All right, I don't like that. And lastly, now this is the deal breaker for me the display 
Now, if you watch my original Razer phone video, I never did a full review on that one because as soon as I unboxed it, I started using it. I went live on stream and sold it to one of the stream gangsters because I wasn't really feeling that phone like that because the display was too dim. Now, this one, they say they increased the brightness up to 580 nits. All right, that's a lot of nits. <laughs> but check this out. Let me show you something. Let's go to Google. Let me pull up a plain Google page. Now, check this out phone is on max brightness all right i got the refresh rate set to 140 uh, 120 i got this on full uh quad hd display status look how dull this is this is max brightness the white this almost looks like cream it doesn't even look like white now i know it's hard to get a general sense of how this looks through a video the best way to show you is let me pull this out now check this out here's my google pixel 3 xl which isn't even the brightest phone in the universe, but it's it's pretty bright. Let me pull up a quick panel, a white page. Let me make sure, let me clear out my scumbag activities real quick first. All right, check this out. Now look at this. Sometimes it's hard to see the difference on a video, but I don't care what you use in a phone, computer, tablet, old school device, you can't tell me that this pixel is not brighter. Now these are both on max brightness. Look at the difference. You see how white this is? And this is kind of creamy. Now, I'm gonna talk about this pixel in a second, but just for even further reference, check this out. Let me pull up my iPhone XS Max. Now look at this. Look at the difference. Oh, I gotta, all right. Look at the difference between the iPhone XS Max versus this Razer. Now this is a gaming phone, so that means chances are you're gonna be looking at this phone more than you look at your average phone. If you're not hardcore gaming, you don't have your phone in your hand all day long or for hours and hours on end as you would playing Fortnite. So why wouldn't you want a phone that has a better, brighter display? Now I know somebody's gonna say, oh the 120 hertz refresh rate. Look man, I had the last phone, I'm using this one right here. Maybe I'm not the best authority to talk about that, because I don't be gaming, but for me, I don't know. I'm not really into it that much. Look at the difference. Brightest, bright, dim. Now, if I pulled out my Galaxy Note or my Mate uh, 20, those are even brighter. Same thing LG G7, super bright. All right, so for me, that's a deal breaker. Y'all know I'm one of them scumbags that walk around with the phone on max brightness all day. If this is max brightness and it's dim inside, imagine outside in the sunlight. Not feeling that at all. All right, but this phone is not a complete piece of trash. All right, I'm not gonna call it trash. I actually do like it, and I'll tell you everything I like real quick. First things first, the build quality. Now this phone feels super premium. All right, super premium. It's a heavy, square kind of phone. Again, that's why I said it's kind of a manly style phone. I doubt if, if uh, a lot of ladies are probably like this look, they, you know, Whatever. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, I'm not sexist. I'm trying not to sound sexist, but again, I think this is just a manly style phone. Now I know nowadays, all of these companies trying to come out with the thinnest and lightest phone, and that's cool. But me, I like a big, heavy phone like this. It just feels substantial. It feels premium. The best way to think about it, imagine it like this. Imagine you go to your favorite restaurant and you sit down to eat, and they give you some silverware. Here goes your fork. Your fork is thin and light. Now it could be made out of space age, uranium, titanium materials that never break. But it's just thin and light while you're eating with that thin light fork. It kind of feels like you're eating from a fast food spot. Like the Chinese restaurant, they got the plastic fork. Or you go to another restaurant and you got one of them old school, big, giant, heavy brass forks. You're gonna feel like, I, I'm, I feel like the king of England. Like this is one of those real, real forks. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's my best way to explain why I like heavy phones. I right? to me they just feel more premium. They just feel like more quality. Now you could disagree if you want, and I I invite you to do that. Anyway, build quality. I'm definitely feeling it. As opposed to the Razer One to the Razer Two. Now you got wireless charge. Wireless charge on deck. The phone is water resistant. Cool. I right, I like that. So no problems with the build quality. It is what it is. Let's open this up. Let's go through the toggles real quick. All right, so you got all your basic toggles. You got your flashlight. You got your auto rotate battery saver. Now, you got dual speakers with Dolby Atmos. If you activate this, you have three different modes. Uh, actually, four. You got dynamic, 
movie, custom, and music. Now, if you go to custom, you, when you're playing music, change the EQ, play with it for yourself. Now, I will say this. To have these two big, giant speakers, these should be the number one speakers in the game, and they not. All right, they not. I would definitely put them in my top four, but they're definitely not number one or number two. Number one is still going to the Pixel 3 XL, and number two is still going, I'm sorry, number, yeah, number two going to the iPhone XS Max. Then number three, I give it to the Note, the mate, everything else after that, and including this. Maybe this might be number three. I have to do a full test. But while we're here, matter of fact, let me let y'all hear for yourself. Here goes the speakers. This is max volume. Here we go. Now, <laughs> don't get me wrong. The speakers sound dope. They sound dope, but check this out. This is number three. Beautiful display. All right, check this out. Let me rewind a little bit. Let's pull up number two on the list. Let's take it over to the iPhone XS Max. The tennis, the tennis Max. Oh, this is, yeah, this is number two on the list. Watch this. Get max volume. Put them side by side. Here's the razor. iPhone. See, now listening to them like this, you're probably not going to hear this in a video. The Razer ones, they might sound a little bit louder, but they have more of a hollow sound to it. When you have the iPhone XS Max in your hand, you can feel the bass. The, the, the sound is rich. This is, it might be a fraction louder, but it doesn't have that full sound. Now, I already tested this out uh, off camera, tested all of the different modes. I couldn't get it to have that same full sound as the iPhone. Now, check this out. Let me show you why I think the Pixel is the best. Listen to the Pixel speakers. Not only are they loud, they still have that same rich effect. Here we go. All right, watch this. <laughs> let me wait for that bass drop. Matter of fact, let me just rewind a little. All right, here's the Pixel. Razor. Yeah, I think, I think the iPhone, let's see, let's skip a little bit. Yeah, listen to this. You can still feel that bass vibrating. I know, I know. It's hard to doing these kind of demos live on camera because you can't get the same effect that I'm getting. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. These might be number three. All right, let me rephrase that. These might be number three. They might be better than the Galaxy. They might be better than the um, HTC U12 Plus. They might even be better than, matter of fact, I, I, was, I would say they definitely better than the Mate 20. All right, that's one of the things that I'm kind of disappointed with the Mate 20 after using it for a while. I'm not really feeling the speakers too much. Anyway, I digress. Let's see, did we miss anything? You got screencast? All right, let's do this real quick. I'm looking for settings. All right, let's go to, uh, we got more. Let's see, you got uh, Nightlight, you got NFC, File Transfer, blah, blah, blah. Let's take it over to settings. All right, now again, 850 bucks, you don't have a lot of features on this, but we'll just go through the ones that you got. You do have Bluetooth, you have NFC, Android Beam, so you can use your Google Pay. Let's see, Battery Life. Let's see, uh, well, I, well, I'm not gonna do a full review on this, but let's just see what we got on deck. Ambient display notifications. All right, battery percentage, blah, blah, blah. Let's go to display. Brightness level on max, refresh rate 120. You can add adaptive brightness if you want, but all that's gonna do is make you mad. Let's go to advanced. Let's see, you got colors. All right, let's go to uh, boost it. Natural. Now I already played with all this stuff to try to get this phone to get brighter and more vivid. Didn't work. All right, here's your two uh, motions. You got double tap to awake, tap to sleep. That's it. 
Let's see, um, no facial unlock. Let's go to security real quick. You do have smart lock. All right, let me throw my pattern in real quick. So you got on body, trusted places, trusted devices, and voice match. No face. All right, so no facial unlock and no face even on smart lock. It's a little disappointing. All right, and that's pretty much it. Let's take it over to the camera. Now, the camera on this is decent. Again, this is a gaming phone. You're not buying it for the camera, but the camera is decent. Let me show you some quick shots. Here's an HDR shot I took. It was not bad. This was a portrait mode. Definitely not the best portrait mode, and you can't adjust the blur. The camera is okay. So if you're running around playing Fortnite, you're getting your kills, and somebody getting slapped across the street, and you want to take a picture or you want to take a video, this is a basic get the job done. You do have dual cameras, but that's really just for look. Because the portrait mode is mm, pretty trash. Let's see, you got beauty. Let's go to settings real quick. Okay, so you can change this camera sound. Video it goes all the way up to 4K. Front camera, 1080p. As far as slow motion and all the other gimmicks, you ain't got them. Right? <laughs> you, you ain't got that. You just got beauty. Let's see, you got uh, panorama, portrait and video. That's it. So basic generic style camera. Now, real quick before I get out of here, let me show you my favorite feature about this phone. I just seen it somewhere. All right, well, the Chroma lighting. Let me let me find that Chroma app. All right, check this out. The Chroma app. Now, once you open this up, uh, you can manage your Chroma effect. Let's put it on blue. You see that light is blue on the back? We can put it on red. Let's put it on green. Now, it's kind of hard to see behind the camera. But look at that breathing effect. To me, that's the dopest feature of this phone. Now check this out, you got breathing, you got static, which would mean just one color, so just stay green, or say you want blue, you're rocking blue today, you just want the back of your phone to look blue all day, it's gonna look like that. You want red, you got red. You got uh, spectrum, now I'll probably leave it on spectrum. You can add LED brightness, we'll leave it on max. Spectrum, basically what it's gonna do, is it's gonna cycle through all of the colors. So you see now it's kinda yellowish, green, Gonna cycle the red, blue, orange. That green is sick though. All right, so that's pretty dope. Let's see, uh, you got battery modes, high, medium, and low. So basically, if you wanna save battery, you wanna turn this off halfway through while you're using your phone. Now y'all know I don't care about no battery life, so I'm leaving this on max. I need that to be shining. All right, so we'll leave this on high. High consumes the most. All right, so that's your chroma effects. To me, that's the dopest part about this phone. And another thing that's pretty lit, if you've seen the uh, wireless charger, they have a Razer wireless charger. And I went on Razer.com, it's sold out. I don't see it on Amazon. I will get it because I need that just for my RGB setup. But basically it's just wireless charger with RGB lights on the bottom. Now right, here's your wireless charge. One thing I noticed about the wireless charger in this, it doesn't work like regular phones where you just put it in the middle. You gotta put this more toward the bottom like that anyway again let me wipe this down one more time Ooh, now that yeah that chroma looks sick though all right that that lighting on the back in the dark room you're gonna look like a boss with that i do like the glass back design but this phone just ain't for me that big forehead big giant chin the lack of features the dim display the poor fingerprint sensor placement I can't co-sign this for 850 bucks, but then again, I'm not a gamer, so it ain't my place to co-sign gaming products. You gotta do that on your own. For me, it's a pass though. All right, now when I do my next stream, if somebody wanna buy this off me, hit me up. I might rock this. I might give it a old uh, college try and try to rock it, but I doubt it. I doubt it. This was actually a special request video. I got about 100 requests to check this phone out. Same thing with the ROG phone. I ordered that too. So we'll get into that. But me personally, I'm not big on gaming. But I'll try my best to give y'all a fair, honest review. Yeah, that symbol on the back. Might have been worth it for that. Anyway, this is the Razer Phone 2. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this. All right, my bad. I was about to get out of here. I just remembered this is a gaming phone. I didn't even check any games. All right, so let's try Gear Club. We'll see how this works. Now, this is one of the only games that I do play.
occasionally. So let's see how trash I am. This is called Gear Club, just in case anybody wants to know. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> then again, it's trash. But um, it'll, it'll kill some time on the bus or the train. And it sounds good, though. It does have nice racing sounds. All right, so here we go. Let's do uh, okay. Okay, we tilt. That's how you steer. Here we go. Now, I'm trying to do this so y'all can actually see. I'm not really looking at this, the phone. That 120 hertz refresh rate. No lag. Ah. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me try to get this W. Bye. Bye. Let's go. Oh. Fuck. All right, here we go. All right, but anyway, you get the idea. Nice and smooth. Let's exit out of this. Now, of course, you got um, split screen multitasking. So if I'm on YouTube, open up something else. Let's go to Chrome. Two apps at the same damn time. Let's exit out of that. Now, here's your, let's, let's, matter of fact, let's close this completely. And we'll do this one fresh. Apple.com. Here's your performance. Definitely super fast. Snapdragon 845 is what you expect. No lag at all. Let's see. A uh, bunch of apps on deck. Bunch of apps open in the background. It is what it is. Shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google+. Plus. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Foxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time. 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to White Shoes. Back in the building. Fresh from vacation. Oh yeah. Special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat. Flossy underscore Carter. That's where I'm at. And a special shout out. To the notification squad i see y'all in the comment section early hashtag salute oh yeah one more thing i almost forgot fellas ladies say it with me all y'all haters all y'all trolls close your eyes and picture me rolling it's your boy floss i'm out deuces Spock won the beam up. Energize. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Floss. Back again with another video. And today we're going to do a quick unboxing of the Huawei Mate 20 Lite.